welcome everyone. Um, today we have a case history here, but uh, beyond the case history, I don't get to see the names. I don't know who's new and who, who isn't new out there. But uh, I want to just give you like a little preface as to what this is all about. If you see the uh, four names on the side, they, they are the sponsors of this particular webinar series, Foot Levelers, Forte Elements, Biokinometrics, and Erconia. I continually want to thank them, <clears throat> but what we're doing, we're creating a model that will that will fill the void that currently exists in musculoskeletal as the super specialists from a diagnostic point of view and therapeutic point of view. And my whole message is that we as chiropractors are licensed to do more than any other profession out there. We're just not using what we have available to us. So <clears throat> these case histories are kind of to show when a person comes in, don't just follow the medical model of thinking, go way beyond that. And that's what's going to make us the super specialists. So these four companies are supporting that effort, supporting that message. I'm saying musculoskeletal is in crisis today. The costs are out of control and getting worse. We have the answer and we are the answer. So that's <clears throat> the theme of what this will be about today. So I go through quite a bit of things. 20-year-old basketball player, chronic sprained right ankle. He's a Division II basketball player, <clears throat> and Division II takes it very seriously. I mean, there are Division III players that have made the NBA. So this it doesn't matter the division. This is a very serious player. <clears throat> he's about 6'3", uh, a black kid, great basketball player, but he's got a sprained right ankle. So <clears throat> again, to remind those who are newer to the webinars, this is the foundation of everything that we're doing. You're looking at Crooked Man on the right. Crooked Man has biomechanical imbalances originating in the feet. Mag's Law of Tissue Tolerance <clears throat> is the science behind these imbalances. When the loading of a tissue exceeds the capacity of that tissue, compensatory physiological changes occur. <clears throat> biomechanical faults cause excessive loading. Every human has biomechanical faults. So there is the foundation of what our whole program is about. We have the Atlas operating system. And first decision, is it acute or non-acute? And the bigger question is, can he go through a full exam? Can he perform a full exam or do we have to deal only with the acute? And we he can perform a full exam, a structural fingerprint exam. So we're electing, we always want to do a structural fingerprint exam if we have the option, if the patient is maneuverable, can stand on both feet with equal weight, which he could. He sprained his ankle and it's, you know, he it's affecting him, but he can stand on both feet. He can walk normal. So it isn't to the degree that he can't walk. So we're going to do a structural fingerprint exam. Here is our form. And again, we will talk to you about how this can be made available to you if you have an interest in it. The exam findings are pretty benign, severe bilateral pronation, possible leg length difference. He had a restricted right Patrick Faber and a restricted left lateral LS flexion. Now, again, these findings are only important uh, for reevaluation purposes. <clears throat> and they don't really show or tell us what the, you know, the crooked man issues are, but it does show you the body's response to crooked man has caused muscular imbalances. So we want those to improve as time goes on. So <clears throat> the second thing we want to talk about is he came in with a right ankle, but he is crooked man. <clears throat> now, one of two things happened. Repetitive biomechanical faults or repetitive activity over time with certain biomechanical faults will cause a vulnerability to a chronic sprain. Or he could have gotten hit from the side like a running back, had a severe sprain, but the biomechanical faults, the uneven weight distribution is keeping that from healing properly or fully. <clears throat> so it really doesn't matter which it is, but that's the importance of understanding all of the biomechanics. So we start in our report with the human biomechanics. It always starts with the feet. So I'll point to the feet when I, I have Crooked Man up and we give our report of findings. And we'll say, okay, let's look at Derek's feet. Now, the feet to the right are the optimal feet. The feet to the left are Derek's feet. And we see two things. And we have Crooked Man. So he's, Crooked Man is visible as you're showing the feet. Uh, number one, there's virtually total collapse of the feet. And number two, 
they aren't the same. So there, you really have crooked man going on in your body. The next thing we do is we go to the next slide and we look at these blue vertical lines. <clears throat> and uh, I will say to the patient, the one on the right, just above the 4.3, <clears throat> and then I'll move up into the corner, to the far right corner where the R is, and I'll show this is a collective collapse of your right foot. So the laser measures the the amount of space under the right foot. You have less space under the right foot than you do under the left foot. So that further creates that imbalance. We then go to the red boxes, and I'm not so sure that these are accurate. This is tremendously extreme. So what I would do is I would retest him again when the ankle <clears throat> is fully healed. But you can see there's a difference between the right and left side of the body, pretty significant. But as I say, that's about the largest difference I've seen, so I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. <clears throat> now, we take x-rays, we measure the femoral head, critical. If you look at the gluteal crease, the buck crack, it is not centered. You look at the obturators, they are totally different positions uh, due to the rotation of the pelvis. Uh, the femoral heads are 9.7 millimeters different. So now I've gone back to this and I say to the patient, that if we can take orthotics and put a custom orthotic in that <clears throat> right shoe, this shoe right here, this foot will act like this foot. That foot will act like that foot. So we can fix the feet pretty easily. Now, if you get orthotics, and I'm reading on the right here, when they come in, <clears throat> we'll put them in your shoes and then retake this APLS as femoral head heights change with orthotics in your shoes, and we need to see how they change so we can adjust for it if necessary. So either it's going to get better or it's going to get worse or it's not going to change. Those are the three options. But <clears throat> trust me, I've done this on literally hundreds of patients now, and those femoral heads most of the time are going to change, and you don't know in what direction. So that's why that re-X-ray is needed. On the lateral view, we have an anterior Ferguson's gravity line, which increases dramatically the loading in the posterior structures of the spine, the pars in the pedicles, making especially a basketball player vulnerable to a pars defect or a spondylo at some point. Increased sacral base angle goes hand in hand with that. It's uh, <clears throat> normal is 36 to 42. So you're going to get a lot of, of facet stress, a facet syndrome type of a, a back issue or a pars defect or a pending spondylo as time goes on. So this is what you want to be aware of with this athlete. And we always show the normal. Ferguson's gravity line, <clears throat> it bisects the anterior third of the sacral base. So we can see that there's a severe um, center of gravity distortion in this patient's uh, low back. And that's a huge thing. Think of the, the front to back imbalance. Now the side to side imbalance, there's a lot of abnormal stresses going through this young man's back. And as I tell parents, youth hides a lot of sins. The tissue is not beat up yet, you don't have problems yet, but predictably they will come. We did an AP open mouth, we missed the atlantodontoid space. The spinous process is relatively centered, the spine is relatively centered, the trachea looks centered, the apices of the lungs look good, so everything looks pretty good there. And we can see on the lateral view, there's a lot of distortion between four and five. So, you know, this is just something that over time, we need to make people understand the importance of this, the likelihood of degenerative changes prematurely. So we show the normal with the, the normal curve of the spine that provides tremendous shock absorption for the head and compare it to the patients. And we know what's going to happen to this. It's going to break down prematurely. And there's a myriad of symptoms that come with degeneration or disc herniations or radiculitis or muscular tension, <clears throat> any one of those conditions. So we want to proactively get the patient working on it. How long does it take, Doc? It might take up to a year of you doing specific exercises, specific treatment, orthotics, but how important is it? It's hugely important. We have to raise that issue. So now we've had, this is with orthotics. You'll see on the right, ilium with orthotics. It goes from uh, 9.7 to 8.9, so it improved. Now we have five distinctly different crooked men. This is crooked man one. When you have an imbalance in femoral heads, you put orthotics on, 
<clears throat> it improves. It doesn't have to go to even. It improves. So there's 9.7 where we started, and it went to 8.9. It improves. So it's Crooked Man 1. There's five distinctly different Crooked Men that you really want to learn about. Every human being is a Crooked Man. Every human being has biomechanical faults, and there's five categories. Each category is different as to how you're going to handle it, how you're going to start. So in our office, we have done a study on the last 125 patients. Well, not the last. It's a group of 125 patients, probably over, I don't know, six-month period that they came in, where we took their x-rays, we measured their femoral heads, we then got their orthotics, put them in their shoes, and re-x-rayed them. And crooked man one is this picture where if you put an orthotics on this crooked man, femoral head heights are going to improve. So how many of the 125 uh, crooked man one? 59 or 40%, which means 53% are a different crooked man. So we, I'm going to talk about our certification program. One of the modules in that certification program are the five distinctly different crooked men and how to test for it and how to what steps to take so that you fix the feet and level the hips prior to starting care, which is only going to dramatically improve the clinical results that you get. So our recommendations for the young men were full sepoyas. There they are to the right. They're very lightweight, tremendous durability. Uh, a seven millimeter lift on the left. If you remember, he had an 8.9, I believe. So seven millimeters is going to fix a lot of that. And I gave up long ago trying to make it so we get them even because a lot of people have more than seven millimeter leg length difference. The big issue is to make it better, <clears throat> relatively speaking. Now, some people can handle 14 millimeters of lift. Most can't. Now, on him, we may at some point add another three, uh, but now you're going over it. And, and again, it's probably going to compress some. But we're going to start with seven and, and try and get that where it belongs. Laser the ankle three times a week. Kinesio tape the ankle. Adjust lower extremities. Adjust full spine. Amino acids, which is a powder. It's a, <clears throat> a protein powder for recovery. And then long term, we want to increase this uh, cervical curve. We also want to reduce Ferguson's <clears throat> um, sacral base angle. So here you can see we've got laser on the ankle. And again, I'm going to talk about laser because it is, it is the top therapy available out there today. And all these injuries that come in, we start them on laser. And you see in this particular case, <coughs> excuse me, we've got kinesio tape on as well. Now, here's an interesting case, and I'm throwing this in the middle of it. This young man's name is Joe Cremo, and you can see the picture was taken in 2014 when he was still in high school. He is one of the, really one of the top players in the country, and he went to a little high school in a little village I grew up in, Scotia. And his three years, uh, his final three years, he was 75 and two. And he elected to go to Albany, State University of Albany, to play Division One basketball, but after his third year, he hadn't made the NCAAs, so he elected to, to quit Albany and to uh, hunt for another school. Well, he got picked up by Villanova the first time they've ever taken a, a, an upperclassman like this. Villanova won the NCAAs last year. So it's a, I think they're ranked about number 15 now. So Joe went there. And by the way, they play on TV tonight on FS1. So if anybody wants to see Joe Cremo play. But here's a picture of Joe with his mother and Joe with me in the office because we've been treating him since he's been a sophomore in high school. And so you can see his fat head on the wall behind his mother of him when he was playing at Albany. Here he is getting some laser on his back and decompression. And we do this preventatively. He's, we're not treating his injury. So we get him new orthotics every couple of years, a couple pair. We, and we, every time he comes in, we do decompression, we do laser, we tape his back. So doing everything we can to keep him healthy because he has a real good chance of making the NBA. And uh, he's excited for the draft that's coming up at the end of the school year. So here are the mean amino acids. If they're injured, they take a pack and pour it in water, drink it in the morning, pack at night, drink it at night. When they're not injured, it's very healthy to do a pack a day because it's just proteins and amino acids. You're saturating the tissues. So the micro recoveries that the body needs to do on a daily basis are being done. You're just nutritionally supporting it. 
So <clears throat> here is our structural management program. We're talking about the launching of our certification program. And this has been years in the in the making because what we're doing is we're trying to create a consistency in the um, diagnostic approach and the therapeutic approach. It doesn't give anybody technique lessons. It doesn't tell you what you have to do therapy-wise. It talks about the structure of how we practice. And we want to do it based on science. We want to do it based on visual evidence. We want to do it based on the most advanced technology. We don't want to follow the guidelines of what ACA is saying uh, with their choosing wisely, discouraging x-rays. Most of the people out there taking care of musculoskeletal have no clue what they're, of what they're taking care of. So with the technology that we teach here, we're creating a different brand, a higher level brand of chiropractor. And we <clears throat> want to get it to the point where you've gone through the online course and the other things that I'll tell you that are needed. And we have a, a commonality in how we view a patient and what um, information we're looking for on examination and how we're going to communicate that to the patient, how we're going to be much more proactive in addressing musculoskeletal. So to become a certified provider, you must attend a foot levelers practice accelerator class anytime within the past 12 months. Now, in the last two and a half years, we've done over 70 of them around the country. So they're all over. Go to Foot Levelers' uh, website and you'll find out where they are. And, and they're no cost. And Foot Levelers, in many cases, will even fund you to get there and your hotel and food and whatever. They've been tremendously gracious with this. You have to have a Foot Levelers 3D body view or kiosk. You have to use our five view x ray series if you tell the patient you're doing a structural fingerprint exam. So you may not want to do a structural fingerprint exam on everyone, but I don't want you saying you're doing the exam without digitally scanning their feet and performing the five view series. So that's a request we make. You must complete our online certification program. And I don't know, it's, it's five, six, seven hours long, but it, it's all great stuff. It took us a long time to put together, but great stuff. And it's only $199 a year or $49 a year for students. So at the completion, you will receive a certificate from us, a, a tremendous thank you from us because you're uh, joining forces to make a difference out there. And Foot Levelers also will provide you with a free pair of Sepoia orthotics. So they cost, I think, 175. The course costs 199. And look at all that you're going to get for that. Uh, here are the 15 modules. Each one is as important as the next. And really, the goal is that we want more docs doing structural fingerprint exams. But if you didn't understand the periphery of the program, the totality of the program, you wouldn't appreciate the examination. So we want you doing this examination. We want you scanning every patient, giving report of findings, uh, being able to help many more different cases out there backed by science, not backed by, I hope this works. I don't know what your problem is, but I hope it works, which is what a lot of musculoskeletal is today. So <clears throat> if, you if you have an interest in this, you go to structuralmanagement.com. Sign up and that'll walk you right through the process. And we are looking to build a very, very large, high quality network of foot levelers and I with this program. So with the certification program, Foot Levelers is my sole partner, but we do have these other three companies as sponsors. So again, here they are, here are the phone numbers. I think you'll have access to this particular um, case history. Uh, after this, we have access to these phone numbers. If not, you can certainly contact our office or Google them or whatever, but you should have access to them. So, Stephen, there you have it. I had a little technical difficulty in the beginning. I'll have to figure out how, how I fix that. But uh, we have, for anyone interested, we are in Schenectady this Thursday for a practice accelerator. We're in Boston Friday for a practice accelerator, and those are four hours each, and there's no cost. And then Saturday, we have an eight-hour eight program in Boston as well, which are for CEU credits. And then we have a very, very full schedule the rest of the this semester. So we'd love to have you guys get to as many of these as you can. Stephen, there you have it. Um, 
I don't know if you're still on the line or not, but as always, a big, huge thank you to Foot Levelers, uh, a thank you to Forte Elements Biokinometrics in Arconia, and uh, to all of the chiropractors out there, because as I'm going to show our profession, we are the most qualified of any professional out there to provide the highest level of care. And that's my mission. So thanks much. Have a great week. Take care. Bye-bye.